Hey, what's up? Godforge here. Welcome to the next video. Today we will implement unidirectional one to one relationship using JPA and Hibernate. We will start with the project generation and we have to add some dependencies. So, for sure, we'll need Spring Web. Also, we will need H2 in memory database. And also, we'll need the JPA. This is everything, so we can download the project and open it in the IDE. Before we start, I would like to encourage you to check out my previous video, where we are creating a bidirectional one-to-one -one relationship using JPA and Hibernate. So make sure to check it out. And now let's go back to our project. It's already imported, so we can start with creating our entities, which we will use to create our unidirectional one-to-one -one relationship. So we go to the source main Java and in the main package of our application, we want to create a new one. So we right click, we select new and we select package and we want to call it model. We will need two entities to create a relationship. So we want to create two classes in our model package. And the first one will be user. And the second class in the model package will be address. Let's start with the address. So in the first place, to create an entity, we have to mark our class with the entity annotation. We also want to specify the table name. So we will use the table annotation and we have to import it and now we can specify the name and we will set it to the address like this our address will have primary key and to create a primary key we have to mark property with the id annotation so we want to use id annotation we want to import it and also we want to specify the generation strategy by using generated value annotation and we'll set the strategy to generation type auto now we can create our property which will be private type of long and it will be called id thanks to that generated value annotation and the strategy set to generation type auto we don't have to take care of the ID value at all because it will be generated automatically. We will add one more property over here. So we'll say private string and this property will store the street name. We can do one more thing in our address entity and it is generating the constructor. So we will generate it and it will accept only the street and we'll use this constructor later in our code to create a new object we don't need to pass the id into the constructor because it will be auto generated now we can go to the user entity and the user entity in this case will be the owning side of the relationship and by the owning side, I mean that the user table will have the column which will store the foraging key of the address. We'll see it later. So now we can mark our class with the entity annotation. And also we can specify the table name and we want to set the name to the user. Our user entity will also have primary key so we want to use id annotation together with the generated value annotation and the strategy set to generation type auto and we want to annotate property which will be private long id our user will also have name so we want to specify another property it will be private string name now we want to create a one-to-one -one relationship so each user will have only one address 
to do it we have to create a property which will be private the type will be address so this is the type of the another entity with the same name which will be address now to create a one-to-one -one relationship we have to mark our address property with the one-to-one -one annotation we also want to use the join column annotation so we say join column and thanks to that annotation we can specify the name of the column which will store the foreign key so we say address id and also we can specify the referenced column name and the referenced column name will be set to id because in the column address id we want to store type id which is the primary key of the address entity from here it is called unidirectional relationship because we have the reference in the user entity to the address entity and we don't have any reference to the user in the address entity it would be nice to have a constructor so let's generate one so we want to generate it for the name and for the address we don't need for the id because it will be auto generated values so let's select name and the address our entities are ready now we also have to create our repositories to work with them so we right click on our main package we select new package and we will call it repository inside we want to create two repositories one for the user and one for the address entity so we right click on our repository package we select new java class we change it from the class to the interface and the first one will be user repository let's create another one so again we are clicking our package we select java class and this time we'll create it for the address so say address repository now we can mark it with the repository annotation so we say repository and now we want to extend create repository and it is the generic type and the first argument will be the type of the entity and in this case it will be address and the second argument will be the type of the primary key in this entity so it will be long we will do the same for the user repository and over here we will mark it with the repository and it will also extend the crude repository and this time we are doing it for the user entity and it will also have the type of the primary key long before creating and persisting entities into the database let's first start the application and check out if the database structure is correct to do it we will have to adjust properties of our application in the first place so go to the resources application properties over here i will paste some properties related to the jpa and h2 database i have created a separated video about those properties and also about setting up the h2 in memory database so if something is not clear over here you can check it out let's start the project so we go to the maven we select our project we select plugins spring boot and spring boot run we double click it and after a few seconds our application should be up application is up it is working on the port 8080 
and I have already navigated to the H2 console. We can connect. And over here we can see that we have two tables, address and the user. If we open it up, we can see that in the address we have ID and street. And in the user table we have ID and the name. But also we have the address ID, which we have specified using join column annotation. And this address ID is referencing the primary key from the address table. Okay, so DB structure looks good. Now we can persist some data. So we can stop the application. And we can go to our main class, which is over here. First of all, we want to access the context to retrieve the repository bins. We can do it by creating configurable application context variable with the same name and by assigning to it the result from the run method. Like this. Now we can retrieve our bins. So we want to first create address repository type variable with the same name. And now using configurable application context, we can call the getBin method and pass the type of the bin which we want to retrieve. And in this case, it will be address repository dot class. We want to do the same for the user repository. So in the first place, we are creating the variable with the user repository type and the same name. And now using configurable application context, we also want to call getBin method, but this time we'll pass the user repository dot class. Now we will create our objects. So first will be the address. So we want to say address. And let's call it also address. And now we will use our constructor. So we want to say new address. And constructor accepts only the street name and we'll call it home street. We can persist this address using address repository. So we can say address repository dot save and we can pass our object, which is the address. Like this. And our address will be already persisted into the database. Let's also create a user. So we go over here, we say user, we have to import it. We will have the same name and now we'll use our constructor. So we say new user and our constructor accepts the name of the user. So let's say it will be John Doe. And as the second argument, we have to pass the address. And we have already created the address, so we can use it again over here to assign it to our user. Now let's persist our user object so we can use it user repository save method and we can pass our user. And right now our user will be persisted into the database. So we can start the application. We go to the Maven Spring Boot Run. After a few seconds, it should be up. We can open the H2 console right now. It's over here. I can connect. We can see that our tables are there. We can select the records from the address and we can see that we have the street with the name home street and the ID one. And uh, we can go to the user table over here. We can select run. And over here, we can see that we have the user John Doe with the ID 2 and the column address ID as the value of 1. And this one is the primary key of the address table from here. So everything works. Okay, so this is everything I have prepared for today. You can also try to retrieve the user from the database again and check out if the address object reference is set correctly and yeah this is basically it thank you for watching remember about liking and subscribing stay tuned bye